What is up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Coming at you with yet again another perfume experience and continuing with the artisanal Ansar Oud theme. Today, you guys, I got something special for you. Um, I caved in <laughs> and decided to go on a couple of utters from the website and the first utter I will bring to your attention, guys, is the Kinam Rouge Galia or Galia, okay? Uh, however, it's pronounced. And uh, I went for the two gram Tola or uh, vial, whatever you want to call it. And uh, the reason I went for this is that when it was released a few months ago as a perfume, I procrastinated on pulling the trigger. It seemed very intriguing to me because of the different ingredients and notes. And lo and behold, it was sold out in less than two days. And I missed out on it. And I kind of regretted it, okay? And uh, when this came out into the picture, uh, as of recent, being in the last few weeks, I thought, you know what? I'm not a big fan of others just because of the projection and the dispersion of the top note. But you know what, I really wanna get my nose on it. So I went ahead and pulled the trigger on the two gram Kinam Rouge Galia. And uh, this is what I'll be talking to you guys about uh, for this upload. So before we proceed with the perfume experience, as per tradition on this channel, yes, you guys, it's still early in the day. I can enjoy a cup of coffee. So make sure to pause the video, go grab your favorite beverage or cafe, and today's beans, for your information, for those of you that care, are from Kenya, and I did throw in some cardamom at the bottom as I was extracting the espresso shot, so I know for a fact this is gonna be très magnifique. All right, let's go. Wow, all's good in the world. That's all you need. You need some oud, some coffee, some sunlight, as you guys can see. And we're living the life. Okay, so I'm going to start off by reading you guys the musing. And I'm going to have some disagreements with it, which I will highlight as we go through it. But <laughs> I won't get on that off of the bat. Okay, so Kinam Rouge Galia. Kinam Rouge is one of my favorite perfumes. I've smelled few things so satisfying as Vietnamese oud stained by the deep red of rose 1978 and the rouge of red champaka, mirror and musk infused patchouli. Because it's a pure concentrate, this Gallia edition may actually capture the profile even better than a sprayable sister. And this is where I'm gonna disagree with this, having had smelt some of Ansar's work in sprayable form and in dab form, personally speaking. And again, it's probably just a preference thing. I think the sprayable format actually smells stronger and better just because once the particles are sprayed and mixed with air, the air opens them up better. That's just my personal opinion, but I actually think had I tried this in sprayable form, I probably would have liked it even more. Uh, than in the dab form. And not to say that I dislike it, it's actually really good, and we'll get into that shortly, but I do believe the sprayable is better. The rich, resinous cherry oud, velvet smooth with a liqueur-like olfactory texture through which saffron oleoresin, imbibed by grapefruit and red mandarin drunk on carnation, come together to bedazzle you with boozy top notes. People talk about a cherry zone in the perfume, which in utter form smells even more dense, tastier, if you will. Again, personally speaking, I disagree with that. <laughs> I think top notes are better expressed in, um, in a sprayable format versus um, a dab format or utter, but hey, to each their own. Then add henna's herbaceous rouge to juhi jasmine and red cedar and the aroma melts with a rich sweetness. Kinam Rouge's 
decadent crimson heart pulsates off frangipini's fusion with red champa to lend an exquisite floral tone to the zesty top. Where frankincense is fresh and citrusy, red mirror is soulful, earthy, and adds a darker syrupy sweet tone that works like magic with the rich creamy tang of the highest quality frangipini. A dash of pink pepper at the top and pink lotus, it took us ages to find a harvest worth using alongside the henna decorated frangi champa fusion. The lily's buttery pink is morphed by the pasty plumeria and red champaka's narcotic fondant to create a spicy burgundy finish. The sensual top notes that lead you to a luxury floral theater where the notes all play in unison is backed by a bass ensemble composed of the quintessential red oud, Vietnamese oud, in the form of kinam rouge coupled with natrang sati, both now discontinued, oozing out pristine krasnasinensis resin right into a gush of the reddest sultani oud in our collection. Because it's an utter, the effect of the 30 or 40 years aged Malaysian oud is felt almost immediately and more pronounced, as opposed to spray format where it's more diffused and tends to emerge as a base note. See, again, I disagree with this, and I'm not a perfumer, I'm not a professional nose here, but I find that the sprayables actually express the notes better. You need air molecules and particles to open up the notes and i mean i don't know maybe maybe i don't know as much as i think i do but i i disagree with that statement anyways so while the perfume was an oud perfume lover's dream this galia is an oud head's red lush love affair in fact if you own the perfume i total layer the galia with a spritz the way this incense grade oldie, even the oldest, rarest Malaysian ouds you could wish to find, would likely be two, two d decades younger than this. And the natrang and grapefruit and carnation inside the frank pini, inside the magnolia, inside the vent vintage red rose, inside red jasmine, all painted with henna, dried with red cedar, makes this kinam rouge. Kinam Rouge Gallia feature, features black ambergris eschew along with full spectrum patchouli infused with Tibetan musk to add lift and projection. This is not only the first raw musk infused patchouli I know of, but these ancient musk pods, truffle like flavor, imbues the amber earthy aroma of fine patchouli with a priceless edge. Okay, so that is it for the musing. Now we shall proceed, God, this cup is good. We shall proceed with the perfume experience. Now, the one thing I'll highlight, and if you guys can see, I don't know if the camera will capture this, but you see this stuff stuck to the top up there? So that's a mix of resin, amber, and musk, okay? Musk grains. So one thing you really wanna do with this is before applying it, shake it, because if you don't, all of that good stuff is stuck to the bottom and now see it's all mixed in all right so just make sure to shake it uh really well before you use it because otherwise everything settles down and you're not getting a good swipe or dab <laughs> as some of you would prefer to say and as per usual i'm gonna be very very careful because yours truly is very clumsy and this is another reason why i'm not really a super fan of dabs but here we go right it's just too much work to apply perfume you guys like i get it that some of you are big fans but hey if this is ever to come out in a spray version i'm definitely getting the sprayable version okay so here we go you guys so this is let's see if i can get the camera to focus for you guys and get some light in so as yeah it's real difficult to show it but as you guys can see here this is the dab and there's some particles of what i'm going to assume is ambergris and truffle 
I said truffle. I meant uh, musk um, in there. But yeah, it's it's a very oily. It's very thick. And you can see that just one little dab applied quite a bit of of the utter and it doesn't soak in right away like with the perfume obviously because the density is higher but anyways we will get started with the perfume experience whoa this is you guys this is something there's so much going on in here that So off of the top, what you're getting is the musk, you're getting the ambergris, you're getting the oud, okay? You're getting also quite a bit of florals, which again, it's really hard to make the distinction between all of them. Wow. But... I will say this, it has the typical Ansar DNA, which is definitely that signature musk oud combo. And uh, it's if you smell it, it's going to seem familiar, but very different also. <sighs> wow. This, okay. So I'm going to profess by saying I'm not too sure how to explain this to you guys in terms of notes. Again, it's very well blended with a few notes and ingredients standing out here and there through the sniff and whiff. However, I will say this. This definitely does have a musky, oody, ambergris, floral, red hue to it. Okay. It's interesting because the the way the scent note works, it comes in and off in waves. It's not a steady stream of one note versus the other. Everything is blended and then as you sniff through it, one note pops and then hides again and another note pops up and then hides and they're on, they're off. It's a very interesting composition. I really, really like something about this that I can't quite put my finger on it. It's very sensual, but very calming, but very exotic and wild at the same time. And it has this touch of happiness to it and comfort, but also has this subtle undertoned sense of excitement to it. There's also a very subtle touch of green in there that's just mixed somewhere in the middle to the background and that's gonna be the function of the patchouli as well as the cedar in here. Something about this is really interesting where it smells like you're walking in a forest and a rose garden at the same time. Two things you don't typically experience together. If you're in forests, generally speaking, roses don't grow there. And if you're in a rose garden, you're not going to see a lot of cedars or pine trees like a lot of those dark greens and um, big trees that give off those strong rainforest, almost soil, black soil scent. But you get this combined both together here. The oud here is very subtle compared to the musk and the ambergris. I will say that given that it is supposed to be an oud centric perfume where the oud is the star being the combination of the Vietnamese oud and there's mention also of Malaysian oud. I'm actually not getting a lot of the oud in here. Maybe it's just very well blended or I'm just not able to pick on and identify it. I've never smelt Vietnamese oud before you guys so maybe that's why but 
the musk and the ambergris here is you can definitely pick on it wow there's the flowers in here are really interesting because you get this hint of red floral mixed in with a light airy indolic floral like jasmine and there is jasmine juhi in here and you get the red luscious rouge floral at the top when you whiff followed by you know at the back end the jasmine juhi this is so it's really interesting because it's almost like a a dynamic of opposites here this has such a soft delicate refined touch to it but then on the other end of it there's a brutal wild animalic facet to it that's very unforgiving in a way and i don't mean in the scent profile that's off-putting but it's just the sense it evokes in me it's a balance of softness and hardness and it's quite amazing how well blended and combined it is here There's definitely an incense quality to this, but it's very subtle and very undertoned. It's not overwhelming. You don't really capture it at the top or the opening or the middle. It's kind of in the background and in the bass notes. Okay. I think in terms of the perfume experience, I will say that's about it. This one is very, very well blended that I am struggling a bit with picking on the notes. So let's move on to performance. In terms of projection trail and silage, so this is the second time I put it on. I'm gonna say, and again, I've said this before, I don't find utters to perform really well on my skin. I'm gonna go as far as saying that for this particular one, it's weak to medium. I'm just have it on my skin here and I, I'm not getting any whiffs towards my face. I am, you know, just even like trying to sniff it as you guys have seen through the video so far. I'm putting in a lot of effort trying to smell the utter and the perfume. And it's just honestly, for what goes into it and the price point, I find that the performance is actually weak to medium at best. And this is also where I disagree with them using on the website where it mentions that the other performance would be better than the per sprayable perfume. I respectfully disagree. Uh, and again, it probably has to do more with my skin chemistry, but I my skin eats up oils. Like I'm already like, I can tell my skin is just absorbing it so hard. Uh, but at the same time, just performance wise, I, I'd say this is on my skin weak. Yeah, it's not it's taking a lot for me to be able to smell it off of my own skin with my arm close to my nose. So I'm going to say in terms of performance, in particular projection trail and silage for me personally, it's weak. Now, in terms of seasonality, I'm going to say with this one, it's going to be very versatile just because of all the different notes and ingredients in it. So you can wear it across all different seasons to so be, you know, winter, fall, spring and summer. I don't think you're going to struggle pulling it off through any of these seasons. In terms of time of day, I'm going to, you know what? And again, I've had it only for a couple of days now and I've worn it only twice. I'm going to say that it's more evening leaning just because of the red hue, the red sort of rouge effect to the perfume. Personally, I would prefer wearing this in the evening versus the morning. However, I am wearing it in the morning right now and it's fine, but I think this will come out to play and shine in the evening. Now, in terms of how you would dress this, I'm gonna say with this one, you don't really wanna be too formal, but you also don't wanna be very casual. So you wanna be somewhere in the middle. So you wanna be semi-formal or semi-casual and you'll be able to pull this off. 
that way. I wouldn't call this an office scent and I wouldn't really call it a clubbing or entertainment scent. This is more of a scent you put on, let's say during the weekend when you're taking it easy, running some errands, when you're just sitting and reading a book and enjoying a cup of coffee. I think that's that kind of scent. It's not necessarily meditative or relaxing oriented per se. However, it can lend itself to that, but it also can be sort of a weekend signature scent where, you know what, you're taking it easy, you're not overly formal, you're not overly casual, but I find that it will come out to play perfectly during uh, these scenarios or contexts. Now, in terms of if it's masculine or feminine leaning, I'm going to say that this is unisex. This is probably the first scent from Ansar where I'm going to even say that it doesn't necessarily fit. When I say unisex, it's not because I think it's befitting for both genders, but rather I would say is that it doesn't really suit one gender over the other. I think if you're a lady or you're feminine leaning, you're going to find certain facets of this that apply to you and others that don't. And if you're masculine or male leaning, then you're going to find that some of it does apply to you, some of it doesn't, just because of the mix of everything in here. You're gonna typically see that patchouli and cedar are masculine leaning, but then you got the jasmine, you got the other florals in here that will tend to be feminine. Then you got the oud, which is typically masculine leaning. Then the musk can go both ways, so is the ambergris. So it's a very interesting combination in here, but... Wow, okay. The other way I would dress this, and it just came to my mind, is if you own a ranch or a farm or you're visiting a vineyard, I think this would be a perfect utter to use on these visits. There's something about this that's very natural and very befitting in a natural setting. So if you're heading out to a vineyard to taste wines, or if you have your own ranch, or if you have your own farm, or if you have your own estate, or if you have your own, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't remember, but you know, the self-sufficient properties where you kind of grow your own food, your own animals for personal consumption and whatnot. I think this is a perfect utter to wear in, in that context and in these places. Not sure why that comes to mind, but it's a very natur natural oriented scent. And uh, yeah, so I would say these are the places and the context you'd wear them in. Now, would I recommend this? If you're an utter lover, if you're a Vietnamese oud lover, 100% yes, go for it. Personally speaking, I will say, I wish I had pulled the trigger on the sprayable format. I think personally, I would have enjoyed the spray more than the utter. Uh, you know, having this and a few of the otters I've just obtained, it just confirms to me that I'm more of a spray person than an otter. But I do know that a lot of you guys are out there appreciate otter versus the spray. And that's just a matter of personal preference. That's fine. Uh, but personally speaking, I would say like, I would have rather to have this in a sprayable format than the otter. Uh, however, I am glad to have had bought the otter version and tried it because now at least I have an idea of what it is and the scent is gorgeous. The only thing I will say is that, you know, to keep in mind in terms of spending on this is performance. Again, my skin eats up oils. So for me, the performance is a bit weaker than I would like it to be in terms of the um, application. Again, I prefer the sprayable versus the other. However, if you like otters, if you like subtle performance, if you like Vietnamese oud, uh, patchouli infused musk, if you like ambergris, then yes, 100% cop it and get yourself one of these. You won't regret it. It's really, really nice to smell. It's such a gorgeous scent and gorgeous composition. Um, I'll just say that if it does ever come again in a sprayable format, I'm jumping on the sprayable format versus the other. Uh, again, the fact that I have to shake it a few times is a bit for me personally annoying before application, but it is what it is. 
But final verdict, get your nose on it, get your wallet on it, cop it. You are gonna love it if that's your jam. Again, to reemphasize, if you're into otters, if you're into subtle performance, if you're into red ouds, if you're into red notes, you're gonna definitely love it. I'm definitely enjoying this and I will be making sure to cop myself a sprayable bottle when they are back in stock, if they ever do make them again. But nothing bad to say about this. It's a fantastic composition. So Kinam Rouge Galia Otter, that was my perfume experience with it. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. As per usual, very much appreciate your time and attention, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.